Hey guys, welcome back to the Let's Play. What do you say we wrap up this mine dungeon? I think we can do it. So now we have to go. I was in this room last time, but then I realized I didn't have everything I needed. Now this room was basically, um, the gist of it was to sort of further introduce people to uh, the crafting. That's a, a switch with no lever. How quaint. Because even though they had the little um, spiel earlier, um, chances are you haven't crafted a whole lot unless you bought that uh, piece of leather from Gino. So this is a chance to get the player to make something, you know, very simple. Just a key where all you need is just, you know, a hunk of metal and uh, a design. So I think it was kind of a good idea to, to stuff that in here. In general, there's a lot in this dungeon. It's very long. Um, but I enjoy that. I th and I think the players enjoyed that, too. Um, I think Mark would prefer it was a little more streamlined. Which, you know, can't blame him, really. I mean, he has high standards for his work. But I think this dungeon still, you know, got a lot of fans. I think people still really enjoy it. So, uh, good times. Now, one thing I want to talk about is uh, combo attacks, which aren't in this version of the game, unfortunately, but we did try for a while um, back in the, uh, the early days. There was a script you could get off the forums, but it was pretty uh, sloppy, and you couldn't really... The combos just sort of happened on their own. You know, you didn't. there was no, like, you know, you, the player didn't choose when you use them. You know, you didn't really know what the conditions were. And you didn't even get to name the double attacks. It would just sort of take the two attacks being used and squish them together. So, which, you know, was actually kind of funny. And uh, sometimes, you know, we still make jokes about the, the combo names. Like, it would take Squall and Bludgeon. And then you get an attack called Squudgeon. <laughs> and, it, you know, and, and in one sense, it did, you know, what those attacks were supposed to do, right? It was, it combined the animations of the two attacks and it uh, did lots of damage so that was kind of cool but it was just a very unprofessional looking <laughs> the fact they couldn't choose when it happened and that there were like these goofy names though one of my favorites was when they would uh, squall would combine with bone cleave so you get an attack that was called bone all which if you think about it um, it was pretty accurate right because all the enemies were going to get boned. So, you know, in that sense, it was a, it was a good name. But, um, yeah, combos was sort of the, uh, the mechanic that got away. <laughs> I mean, there's more sophisticated stuff emerged from people on the forums and stuff later in the game's uh, production, but we were so far that it wouldn't have made much sense to introduce them in, like, you know, arc five or six. So we just sort of had to say goodbye to that. We did get them in World of Remade, um, if you guys played that. Sorry, I jostled my mic by accident. Um, if you guys played that. Uh, but, uh, you know, since there were only a couple playable characters, uh, we didn't get a chance to explore as much. You know, if we had gotten uh, far enough in that game to where you had the entire cast at your disposal, uh, we could have we could used that. And so that would have been fun. But I'm also planning on using them for Legacy. I had Fulmar make a, a, a script for him, and it's very intuitive. He does good work. Although I haven't talked to him in a while. I don't know what he's up to. Um, he'd be happy to know I was getting back into Legacy, because he worked pretty hard on that stuff. Speaking of that, I remember last time uh, I sort of floated the possibility of... of you know, recording some of it, some of the other stuff I've been working on and putting it on. I think I will. Um, there's one more scene I want to kind of get done before I do that, but yeah, I could probably, uh, I'll probably upload like a, I don't know, five, six minute clip up here just so you guys can see like kind of what it looks like, because it's really, it's still very little is done. So, you know, not too much to see, but at least you can sort of see the characters in action, a few of the mechanics. And see the kind of limited progress we have with the, the battle system. All right, so we got our key, and I believe that's the end of the dungeon. But there's another thing you can do. It's kind of a bonus thing, 
where you um, play minecart chicken. So we gotta find a mole and boy, I'll tell you, even with like, even with restricting it to certain rooms and everything, the encounter in this place is still pretty high. Uh, I feel like I'm just getting hitting guys constantly. Oh, almost made it out. Yeah, so if we go back here, back where I knock these idiots out. Oh, let's clear this out first. This is actually a dungeon, I mean a little tunnel, that takes you back to the very beginning of the dungeon. Um, Mark was always good at stuff like this. Just uh, letting the player kind of get around easy. Because, I mean, you, know, you covered a lot of ground going through here, so having to backtrack the regular way would have been pretty insufferable. This guy should go down pretty quick. Boy. That should clear up this passage. Yep, here we are. So, you know, if you want to buy some items and shit off this fair, you can come back here. Although there is another one over by the, the Deacon Church. Still missing four treasures. That probably means that uh, they're in that mole maze, which I don't care to go back in. <laughs> I never did find the map. I probably have, like, a an image of it somewhere on my computer, but, you know. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Let's get some more monster repellent. And then get ready for minecart chicken. Now, this was a completely... Uh, <laughs> separate thing. It's not required to do this dungeon, but it's pretty fun, I think. But you have to you you have to stop your minecart after this guy, but you also can't go off the cliff. Whoa! Yeah. You know, don't do what I just did basically. I I didn't even like hit the brake until the very end. Ay ay ay. So basically you have to s stop as late as you can without going over and it's, it's not easy, but I think you get a nice little batch of items if you win. Alright, let's do this. Shroud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Damn. Alright, one more time, maybe. Come on. Okay, gotta stop earlier. Oh, come on. Oh, so close. No, no. Fuck. Aye, aye, aye. Well, I hope we don't have one of having a half hour of this. I'm not. This probably wasn't what you guys thought you were getting. Alright, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's stop early. Yeah, that was pretty early. Yeah, fuck this. I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't have time to be wasting doing that. We gotta go deal with Deacon. What level am I? Oh, I'm actually pretty close to leveling up again. So maybe I'll grind just a tad to get over that hump. So it's August, guys. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty happy with the rate we've been going through this. I started this, I don't know, around the 4th maybe, a little after. Uh, I have to look at YouTube to be sure, but we're already through um, Arc 1 and put in a nice chunk of 2, so at the rate we're going, maybe we'll be done, I don't know, Christmas? <laughs> I'm not sure. Sounds about right. Because, you know, later arcs are going to get a lot longer. And arc 3 in particular, since a lot of it's uh, cutscenes. And of course, I've then you got arc 5, obviously. But I think I might make longer videos when I get to arc 5. Just because breaking up those flashbacks is not much point to it. Um, because, you know, you can only save at certain spots. And, but, you know, that's something I can figure out. Once I'm there, nothing too immediate. Oof, these guys are roughing me up. Ah. Beat him up. Yeah. All 
Alright, maybe I can go in the little room in here. You know, funny story about this place. Um, when we first got this arc done, we had somebody we knew test it. And they were a little under-leveled, so they couldn't beat Deacon. But because you fight Deacon in that room I just left, you're basically trapped in here. And so... We had to, like, throw in a little event to, like, level him up, basically, because he just couldn't beat Deacon at the level he was at. So, that gave Mark the idea of throwing in this little cave where you can go fight some monsters. If you want to level up. It shouldn't take me too long. I was, I've already done a couple battles, and I was close to the end. But yeah, it's just one of those things that you gotta keep track of when you're a developer. You know what I mean? Like... You don't want to, like, get people stuck. I think, you know, we got so nervous about that that, like, all these fairies later on say, like, hey, you better save in a different slot in case you get stuck. So, I don't know, maybe that's a little overdoing it, but we were just being pretty cautious. Alright, so now we leveled up, and I think it's time to confront the boss. Okay, uh, uh, shit, I didn't mean to say it twice, but whatever. So this church is identical in design to one that we're going to see in Arc 3, for story reasons that make sense at the time. And here's little kids being put into a, I don't know, religious trance or something. Well, except this one. Oh, wait, no. Where's the weirdo? Uh, oh, yeah, it's got to be the, the gray-haired girl. <laughs> This song's moody as hell. I like it. You gotta look in the Arcadius texts. I really came up with a catchy name for that. I didn't really want to call it the Bible. Um, but it'd be nice. The Bible's a nice, catchy, short name. So that would be cool. To have something like that. Anybody got any ideas? You know, comment. Throw them at me. Maybe I'll use one of them. And here we meet Deacon, our first hand adversary. When I originally came up with the character, I imagined him black. Um, but uh, friggin' RPG maker. It's actually pretty hard to find black sprites. I mean, not so much now, because now in VX Ace you have that character generator, and you can you can make darker skin sprites. But back in in XP, there was nothing like that. And if that color slider on the sprites was worth a damn, it would just change skin color. Rather than give people, like, you know, purple skin and green hair. Um, which is good if you're making the Joker, but, you know, even he has white skin, so it's just not good for anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I always want... And it, I had a sort of thought process behind that. Just if the first enemy... Because one thing I always thought about the Solus universe, which I found interesting, was that because so much of the culture is informed by the um, the conflict between humans and other races, or you know, in certain cases, the other races. I mean, the you know, orcs and elves have never gotten along in particular, um, and there was at some point the orcs enslaved the ogres, so that's obviously a, a sore point still. But um, but basically, I figure. If we had differences like that, like racial stuff among humans, wouldn't matter. So no one would care that Deacon had, if he had dark skin, nobody would care. Because I think that'd be true on Earth too, right? Like if there were fucking orcs and goblins going around with their own societies and stuff, nobody would give a shit about like humans with, with darker skin. I mean, those differences would be like nothing compared to the differences between the um, the others. So yeah, this is a little food for thought for you. And as you can see, I've thrown, I, I bought a lionfish, or I think I found one actually, and I've given it to one of Deacon's clones to get him out of the way for a few turns. So there are two ways you can approach this. Uh, the more practical one, oh, that's right. Deacon happens to get rid of every buff you put on yourself, so intensity is useless. Um, yeah, I guess he has the spell, which is what Auburn has later. 
but uh, you can. The smart way is to go after the clones first because they're a little bit weaker. He says they aren't, but he's kind of exaggerating for the sake of bravado. I mean, they're tough. They're tougher than uh, Shroud and Stoic probably expected, but they can't take as much of a beating as a real thing. And if you do that, he um, he powers up. And you can go after him first if you want. And if you do happen to beat him, the other two will just drop instantly. But you're going to get really beat up if you do that. It'd be one of those things you could throw in a Xbox achievement for if uh, this game ever made it on there. Which, you know, <laughs> would never happen, at least not this incarnation. Now this was actually the second version of this battler that we got from from Anchor. Um, you know, it was one of those things where he did. Uh, the more he did, the less satisfied he was with the older ones. So, but as always, he's got the details. You can see his little uh, stole there, whatever you want to call it. Um, has like a stained glass version of the hand of Arcadius. Which actually the player hasn't seen that logo up close yet. We will shortly. So it's kind of a nice little detail. This, he's gotta be going down so Oh dear. That ain't good. I love Angel's Tears. I wonder if uh when Dasani was alive if they ever just like shoved onions in her face and then <laughs> caught her tears in a, in a jar. Look at that, because apparently they're, they're pretty powerful. Oh, I can't do intensity, so I guess just whack him. Oof. He can really uh, put the hurt on Stoic. Because even though he's primarily a physical fighter, he's definitely got some, some tough holy spells. I guess that's, you know, what you get when you're educated at the monastery. As he was. It's gotta be almost done, right? Sorry, I'm getting a little antsy. There's a lot of story stuff coming up that I want to talk about. Oh my god, man, can this guy take a beating? There we go. <laughs> of course, Stoic has to get up in his grill as soon as they win. And then something happens here, which is more important than you think. Since the cave's about to cave in and Deacon can't, couldn't stop the rock. So, oh, yeah, it looks painful. Um, you know, people kind of expect bosses to die and never be mentioned again, but that moment actually has a pretty significant effect on the narrative. Now this is another scene that is fairly controversial, um, and I, I definitely understand why, but there's this important, the most important line is this one. What we need to ask ourselves is why. Why would they do this? Who benefits? And Shroud kind of, you know, ponders that over for a little bit. And then starts to suspect Equipment King, just because, well, he, he is reasoning, you know, he explains his reasoning at length, just that, like, you know, making people frightened is a good way to get them to buy weapons. And, um, and people thought, like, oh, you know, he's so paranoid, he thought of Equipment King right away. And, you know, then, of course, he turns out to be right, so that's bullshit. And, look, on one level, I get it. It does seem very contrived. Especially because, you know, he's right. But, on the other hand, Stoic asks the right question. And that question is, who benefits? I'm telling you, man, that, that's, that's a question that somebody who lived a few centuries would ask. Because if you look at, like, the problems in society, and you ask that question, who benefits? Who benefits from things this way? I think you'll have some insights about things. 
You know, I don't have to go through examples right now, but uh, I think you get the idea. All right, and now for another scene that's a little infamous. Um, and where Shroud Stoic, I love this, declare Equipment King officially corrupt. What the? It's pretty cheese. But I don't know, man. I mean, I think the idea of superheroes standing on top of a building and sort of calling somebody out is, is pretty classic. Uh, but this was, you know, poorly thought out and Stoic should know better, really. But I guess he sort of gave into um, gave into Shroud's lesser instincts, and uh, he's you know seen so much bullshit over the course of his life that it may be more apparent to him than than other people when it's occurring. But obviously, the crowd is is just not buying it, and really, you know, they don't have much of a reason to. I mean, they haven't looked into the, the stuff that's already happened in um, Relenia and they certainly and they've totally underestimated uh, Kovac Kovac is one smooth dude you know he's not going to be <laughs> I keep comparing him to Donald Trump and I have to man I have to because there's the election that's half the reason why I wanted to do this let's play now is because so we could talk about the election but you know what Donald Trump would do he'd go on Twitter and just be like Shroud and Stoic hate business. They think I would kidnap kids. Sad. But uh, Kovac is a lot classier about it. And so now Shroud's going to fucking pout <laughs> back here. Because um, it just didn't work out. You know, because it's one thing to catch a bank robber in the act. But, uh, you know, it's a whole different kettle of fish. When, you know, more like complicated corporate thuggery. Yeah, and at least he admits it, that he was foolish. And that Kovac is a pro. He's still mad, though. That Bush is going to pay. I can see it on a smug face. Yeah, that's not that's not really evidence, Sad. It's just not liking somebody. Um, but once again, in case it wasn't clear from like the 15-minute rant about this the other time. Oh, look at that. Um, that's my drawing. I'm a shitty artist, so I sort of use that to our advantage for the scene. But, uh, once again, this is not supposed to be, like, role model behavior that they're exhibiting right now. Especially Shroud. I mean, Stoic's just, you know, I don't know, he's being a little nihilistic about the whole thing, I guess, just watching the, watching the drama. But, um... Shroud's young, he's impulsive, he doesn't really know how to convince people of things, even though he thinks he does. And it's just part of his character arc. And uh, so here's the thing. Um, well, I will defend the last few scenes. This one, not so much. Um, you know, Arbane and I were talking, uh, Mark, Mark and I were talking a while ago, and uh, we both agreed that this scene where you first meet Ketsu... And it's confirmed that he's working with Kovac and that they were all involved with the the mine thing. Um, I don't know. It's just too... It solves the mystery too early, I guess. And if we did the game again, I don't think i put it in. In general, I would want to um, increase the mystery around the hand. Like, the idea for them was sort of like the Legion of Doom or the Sinister Six or whatever, right? Just like a team of supervillains. I mean, that's pretty cool. But um, I underplayed that for whatever reason. I'm sure I had reasoning in my head at the time, but now I think that was a mistake. And I think I would want um, the leader of the hand to be a persona that would be a little different from Ketsu, the human being, um, to the point where there might be some suspense about like whether he was actually the cult leader or not. Although, obviously, anybody who played this version would know, but that's okay. Um... And I think I'd give them all, like, more super villainous names. Like, I think Ketsu's name would be the Prophet. You know, he'd have kind of like um, a hood or something. You wouldn't know who he was. But this scene, I, again, I don't think I'd even include, or maybe at least a, a, a short version of it. Because I just think it's, I don't know. 
something about it just doesn't work for me anymore. But um, unless I probably should wrap things up in a little bit, uh, so I can get I want to get the party thing um, in one entry if I can. I may not be able to, but it wasn't that long. Um, so yeah, like I just said, there's going to be a party at Kovacs' house, and they're going to go, and we're going to have a sort of different kind of uh, you know investigative action here. Um, I think a lot of times it's nice to follow up like a huge dungeon like that with uh, something a little more low-key, something a little less involved. I think the contrast just makes for a um, you know more varied experience. So let's see. What do we got coming up here? We got some good stuff coming up, don't we? Um, we're going to go to the party and have that whole dancing and fighting scene. That's a lot of fun. And then the uh, daydream stuff is going to start after that, right? And that's, you know, that was pretty popular. It was surprisingly popular, actually. Um, TV Tropes loves that scene. And even though it's, it's kind of absurd for reasons we'll talk about when we get to it. But uh, for now, I guess we can just... Well, let's put on some... No, let's see. I know I got some new stuff, though. Where is it? Yeah, here we go. Let's get him over to the mansion, and then we'll and then we'll stop. So, anyway, so be on the lookout for the legacy thing. Uh, I'm not sure which one we'll get up first, that or the next um, the next chapter of this. But uh, if it's legacy, you're going to have to find it here on YouTube. Um, I'm not going to put it on RPGMaker.net, at least not yet, just because it doesn't have a page there. I wonder if I got anything. If I can make anything else. If I got anything from that dungeon. Uh, what do I need for that Habergon? No. Okay, that's right. You get that stuff from Marcelo. That's right. Okay, so I'm jumping the gun a little bit there. Anyway, so I hope you guys have been enjoying this. I have. That's sort of gotten my creative spirit going. And uh, I may have more legacy stuff to show off during this and hopefully after it's over. After my way, filthy peasants. All right, everybody. Have a good day. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.